Amen. The Gospel of Matthew, please. And we're in chapter 17 this morning. Matthew, please, chapter 17. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 17, and commencing, please, to read from verse 1. And after six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up unto an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, which was Elijah, talking with him. And then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man, save Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already. And they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise, shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. Just the other day as I was reading from this portion this morning, I thought to myself and I couldn't help but think, what a wonderful privilege, what a wonderful position that Peter, James, and John found themselves in that day. What a privilege it was. And what a position they found themselves in when the Lord Jesus Christ took these three disciples apart to be with Himself. What an experience it must have been when the Lord Jesus Christ took them, as we read in verse 1 there, took them up into a high mountain apart. You know, dear child of God, that's a blessed place to be. To take yourself apart, to be alone with God. To have that place where you and the Lord alone meet. It's a great exercise for every Christian to adopt, to spend time apart with the Lord and to spend time alone with Him. That secret place, that blessed place where you and the, lo the Lord alone meet. I wonder, child of God, this morning, have you that secret place? Have you that place where only the Lord and you know of? You see, child of God, there's nothing like that place. And it's in the secret place. It's in that place set apart this morning where the Lord reveals things where He doesn't reveal them anywhere else. Blessed is the secret place where we gather alone with God. After a Billy Graham crusade, a young farmhand who was working on a farm not so long away, got, got not so far away, got gloriously saved. 
And during the wee disciple, as he was reading his discipleship package, he, he was taught how he needed to develop to have that secret place with God. He found himself a barn where there was straw kept, and he sought himself every morning at four o'clock to go into that barn, climb over the bales of straw, and he lifted it out the bales of straw, and he used to get down into the corner of that wee hole, just along with himself and his Bible and a wee torch. He wanted to develop that exercise, getting alone with God. Every morning at 4 a.m., that young farmhand found himself in that barn, in the corner of that shed, alone with God. He used to call it his hidey hole, but it wasn't too long. He was there for four years, and every morning he occupied that secret place, that place that only God and he knew about. And every morning at 4 a.m., child of God, there he communed with the Lord. He was there for four years, as I have already said, and he was moving on, and he asked the farmer, could he buy or purchase the bale of straw that he sat on? The young farmhand said, that, used, that started off, he says, with a, as a hidey hole, but that place became a sacred sanctuary. And he asked the farmer, could he buy that bale of straw that he sat on morning by morning just spending time with the Lord? And you know, child of God, how sacred is the secret place where Jesus and we meet. I wonder this morning, child of God, have you that secret place? that blessed place where only you and the Lord meet. Because, child of God, if you don't have the secret place, allow me this morning to encourage you to develop that place where the Lord and you meet. Charles Finney, the great reviver of a bygone day, used to go into a wee planting in his early Christian life, and there used to be a bush that used to hang over, and Finney used to crawl under that bush every day and meet with God there. And he places heaven when you meet with the blessed Savior. But the Lord Jesus on this day brings Peter, James, and John to a high mountain, what a blessed privilege it was for these three disciples to be taken apart up onto this high mountain and there to be alone with Him. Verse 4 begins with the excitement of the experience. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Why? Verse 3, because behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Man, wouldn't you have been loved to have been there? Wouldn't you love to have had that experience? To be on that mountain that day, to witness the, the whole situation, the whole thing for yourself, not only to see the blessed Savior, of course, but to see the experience of, of Moses and Elijah being there. But you know, friend, what a moment it was when the Lord Jesus revealed His glory. Verse 2, it says, And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. But this is where the Lord wants us to focus into this morning. Two things. First of all, Peter's suggestion. You know, child of God, this morning, we need to be careful what we say. We need to be careful as to what we suggest. It may sound good. It may sound fitting. But child of God this morning, just be careful as to what you suggest and to what you say this morning. Listen to what Peter said. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, 
It is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. And let me pause just for a wee moment. This brings comfort. This brings comfort. This brings comfort because this proves to me death is not the end. Moses was 40, some 1,480 odd years dead and buried, and yet he appears on the Mount of Transfiguration. Death's not the end. It certainly wasn't the end for Moses. That day on the Mount of Transfiguration, oh, blessed be that experience, it proves to us that when loved ones have gone, it's not the end of our loved ones. They're safe in the arms of Jesus. And they're safe on His gentle breast. And at this very moment, there by His love, they're being overshaded, and sweetly their souls do rest. And you know, this morning when I look to the mountain transfiguration, it brings comfort. Moses died in Deuteronomy 34 and 5, and here he appears on the Mount of Transfiguration with the blessed Savior. And you know, this brings comfort to the Park family this morning. A wife, mother and grandmother, yes, led into Mother Earth. But you know, she's with her blessed Savior today. D. L. Moody, the great 19th century evangelist, quoted, One day you'll read in the papers, D. L. Moody of Chicago has died. You know what he said? He says, Don't you believe a word of it? I'll be far more alive then than what I am now. Oh, be comforted grieving families this morning. The death of the believer is not the end. They're at home with their blessed Savior. And not only here this morning do we see Moses, we see her here, Elijah. Elijah talking with him. Elijah was the one who, who was taken up with the whirlwind. You know what that reminds me this morning? Mo Elijah didn't die. Elijah was raptured. He was translated. And this teaches me this morning, child of God, those at the day of the second coming, those who die in Christ and those that will be raptured at His coming will go together to be with the Lord. Thank God this morning what a hope we have. Glory to God. I'm telling you, death hasn't. I remember Jimmy Hanna saying to, I saying to Jimmy Hanna, he was our local grave digger. And I says to Jimmy, if you ever have to bury me, I says, don't you be worrying one hit. I says, put the clay in and, and heal away. He says, because your grave digger spade won't have the final say on this body. The Lord shout will. Because he says, no matter how far you put me down, I'm coming back up. Glory to God. Thank God what a blessed hope we have this morning. But listen to me this morning, child of God. This is where the Lord wants to speak to us. Peter's suggestion. If thou wilt, he suggests, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elijah. You know, child of God, I believe that Peter spoke out of goodwill. He meant well. It was a lovely thought. It was a kind gesture. It sounded good. But child of God, what Peter suggested this morning was something of great mistake. And child of God, this morning, what was happening here was, he says, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And child of God, this morning, listen, never make this same mistake. Never bring Christ down to the same level as man. Never bring Christ down as the same level as man. Always remember, no matter how great men are, they're only men. Moses was a mighty man of God. Elijah was a mighty man of God. But Christ must have the preeminent place. 
Peter suggested, Lord, if thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But do you know what Peter's suggestion done? Peter's suggestion provoked, listen to me, Peter's suggestion provoked God's reaction. Verse 4, then, sorry, verse 5, while he yet spake, God didn't wait for Peter to finish. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. God reacts. There's a great danger that goes on churches today. There's a great danger that goes with on within churches today. And the great danger is this, and it's very dangerous, to put the servant of God almost in the same level as the Son of God, and that's way dangerous. Peter suggests, Lord, if you will, let us build here three tabernacles. One for you, Lord, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Let's remember Moses was the great leader that brought Israel out of the land of bondage. He was God's man, wasn't he? He was the man that God gave the law to. Mighty man of God as he was. But God wasn't going to be putting up with any nonsense that Moses be erected a tabernacle. Secondly, Elijah, he was a mighty man of God. Moses represents the law. Elijah represents the prophets. He was a mighty man of God. Yes, a mighty man of God he was. Man mightily used of God. But what God this morning, God, listen to me, God this morning wasn't going to put up with any tabernacle being erected for Elijah. The great danger within church is child of God. And sometimes we lose our focus. This is what happened on the Mount of Transfiguration. They began to worship God's servants. rather than only God's Son. And child of God, listen. Isaiah 42 and verse 8 says this, I am the Lord. That is my name and my glory will I not give. To another. Now, we word of warning for all of us never, ever, ever put a servant of God on a pedestal. He's only a man. Moses was only a man, great man of God he was, he was only a man, and Moses had his faults. <clears throat> Elijah was, only, was a mighty man of God, but listen, child of God, he was only a man. 
And friend, when Peter suggested about building three tabernacles, God was having none of it. The glory that is due to my only begotten Son, I'm sharing that glory with nobody else, even Moses, even Elijah. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye Him. And child of God, God won't put up with it. God will never allow you to exalt a man in the same league as his only son. Listen, it has happened in years gone by when pastors were worshipped. When pastors were almost idolized. And I'm sorry to say that, child of God, but that's what happened. And God stepped in and God was having none of it. Listen, child of God, Christ must have the preeminent place in any fellowship. He, must, he alone must have all the worship and all the praise and all the glory. And may Kilkeel Baptist Tabernacle never lose that focus. Christ must be the central and have the preeminent place. May we be Christ-centered. He alone deserves the glory. He alone deserves the worship this morning, not men. God says, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now listen, hear ye him. And child of God, Tell me this this morning. Is there a Moses or an Elijah in your heart? Is there a Mo Moses or an Elijah this morning that's drawing your focus away from the Son of God? Peter's suggestion provoked, listen to me, it provoked God's reaction. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. God says, you worship my son, never my servants. What happens? And verse 6 says, And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched the market. Moses or Elijah didn't come. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Peter's suggestion provoked God's reaction. And that's why, child of God, it's very important that we be careful what we say. God stepped in on the Mount of Transfiguration and God removed His two servants. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Listen, child of God, He will never, ever, ever share His glory with any other. No matter how gifted a preacher a man may be, and it doesn't matter how blessed a man's ministry is, he's only a man, and never forget that. The best of men are only men at their best. 
And you be careful, as I have to be careful. God may just remove His servants because glory is ascribed more to them than it is to His Son. And it has happened. It has happened before. I say this in love this morning, but I say it by the way as it really happened. And what I'm going to tell you now was quoted to me by men of God from this area. Sorry, from the area from which I'm going to relate to. Most of you all know and I'm sure I've heard of one pastor who God really gifted, God really blessed, and God really used. And he came from Lurgan, and some of you know who I'm talking about. He was a mighty man of God, and he was one of the greatest Bible teachers and preachers that our wee province has ever heard. I never heard him live, but I certainly have heard him on tape, and his ministry, even yet, is a blessing to me. Many Christians from that area, many Christians from that area almost idolized the man. And they set him on a pedestal. And the man who told me this is one of the godliest men I've ever met. He says, George, whatever that man would have said and told them to do, they would have done it. He says, it got to the stage, he says, people flocked to hear the man and not to hear the Lord. And he says, the danger was, and it was proven, that people was almost bringing all the glory to the man than to God, and here's the reason why. When the man died, and the way he died, half of the people didn't know where they were, and a half of them didn't know whether they were saved or lost. And no matter how great a man is in God's name, don't worship him. God won't have it. God removes those this morning who are getting glory. God won't share His glory with anybody else. Let us build here three tabernacles, one for you, Lord, one for Moses, one for Elijah. But Peter's suggestion provoked God's reaction, for God wasn't having any of it. And God will not have any of it if another is getting the glory. Psalm 39 and verse 5 gives us the great picture of it all. Every man, listen to it, every man at his best is altogether vanity. And child of God, never forget that. Peter's suggestion provoked God's reaction that left the disciples with one observation. And when they had lifted their eyes, they saw no man. God removed Moses, and God removed Elijah, but He didn't remove the Savior. 
because their focus was refixed. Child of God, listen to me. It has to be Jesus only. No matter how gifted a man is or how blessed his ministry may be, it has to be Jesus and Jesus only. And God will have it no other way. Peter's suggestion provoke God's reaction. And child of God this morning, listen to me. It has to be Jesus and Jesus only. Because the message that comes to my heart from the Mount of Transfiguration this morning is this. My glory will I share with no other. And may the Lord burn that truth into our hearts this morning and let us focus on Jesus only. To God, to God, be all the glory. 385 is our, is our closing hymn. 385, to God be the glory. Great things He hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. The chorus says, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice.